going on guys? Coach Abby here to bring you some tips and tricks on your Jiu Jitsu journey and help you become 1% better every day. Today, we're gonna to be talking about what you need or the essentials when you're starting Jiu Jitsu. In the beginning, you should be asking yourself or what I would do and what I did do is how serious am I going to be in this sport? Before you go and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on things that you probably won't use if you're not gonna to commit to it, uh, that's just gonna be a waste. So what I do recommend is first, see what your school is all about as far as geese, patches, things like that. You can go one of two ways. First, what I did was I actually asked if I could borrow a gi from somebody I knew. That was really helpful because I was able to see the fit, the feeling, heavy, light, you know, there's a ton of gis out there. And so you'll be able to kind of gauge where it's at if you just borrow a gi for maybe a week. See how it goes. Then you can go and buy yourself an affordable gi. If there is a gi that you have to use that's by the school, talk to the school and see if you can in fact maybe do a payment plan, maybe see if there's a way to buy one that's slightly used that maybe someone didn't want to commit very long and so they returned it. There's ways to find alternatives when you're first starting off. But you do in fact need a gi if you're gonna be doing no gi training. It's very helpful to the partner that you're training with and to yourself as you learn gi jiu-jitsu. No gi jiu-jitsu is very different. Now I did no gi for about two and a half years and then I stepped back and just focused on gi. Will I go back to no gi? Maybe, but I don't really care so much right now. I do like the no gi contact, uh, but I just found my interest was more in gi. Nothing wrong with either or, that's just what I've chosen. Will I go back, like I said? I don't know, maybe. It's, it's not a no never, but right now, I'm not really interested in just doing no gi in general right now. So, if you're in no gi, what I recommend is for sure getting some kind of a compression shirt or rash guard that covers the sleeves, if not short sleeve, long sleeve. I always liked long sleeve. There's a lot of sweat involved. There's a lot of movement, a lot of direct contact. And so it's important to keep yourself healthy and safe, not from getting ringworm. You don't want ringworm. You don't want any extra sweat on you if you're, if you're wanting to stay clean. You wanna make sure that you're covered, right? You're still gonna be getting sweaty. They're gonna be getting sweaty. Do your best to, in fact, wear something long sleeve and that also goes for pants. Now, there are some girls that will wear like capris or they will wear shorts. That's up to you. If you feel comfortable with it, go for it. If you're gonna wear shorts, make sure you have, you know, Spanx, spandex, something under it because you're moving everywhere, doing all kinds of movements just to respect your partner, respect if you have a spouse or somebody that you, you know, are, are dating. It's good to be covered unless you guys are into that kind of stuff, which I don't even want to get into. So number one, don't go out and buy everything that you feel like you need. Get a gi or borrow a gi. I would not spend more than like 80 bucks um, if you don't even know if you're gonna commit, okay? And I would not say, yes, I'm gonna commit until you're like a month in because a lot of people get this happy vibe because it's brand new, it's something exciting. But in reality, can you stick to it? And if you can, in fact, stick to it, then make the investment on the nicer geese, on the nicer clothing, compression pants, etc. The second thing I'm gonna say is, like I said, try to be fully covered when you're doing no gi because of the hygiene, because of the sweat. And as females, I will say, you, you do wanna wear darker clothes down below just in case anything happens. If you are extremely confident, if you're not near a time of the month or anything like that, okay. But just for the consideration of yourself and your safety and your health, I would not wear white. <laughs> um, or if you're gonna wear white, be 100% safe and secure that you will be covered. The last thing I'm gonna say, and that goes for men too, just out of respect, I have seen a few guys in like light white colored spandex shorts and there's not a lot of coverage. I don't look, but it's not something appealing. So maybe just keep that into consideration, you know, do a check, of a stretch check, see if you can see your hand through the material and that would be helpful to your partners to be able to focus and like I mentioned before, the cleanliness. The last thing I'm gonna say is for the basic equipment, you want to make sure that you are keeping things simple. So what I mean by simple is I would not buy lots of things. This kind of goes back to, to the expense idea, but it's also the quality. So depending on how often you train, 
as far as compression shirts, pants, um, geese, sports bras, all of those are going to come into play, but I'd get maybe two sets of each if you're gonna be training two to three days a week. And then if you can stick to it for a month or two, and it's making sense for you to invest more, invest in some good quality rash guards or geese that you feel like you could use for a long period of time. This is gonna be based off of the reviews. Obviously, you also, side note, wanna get reviews on the things you're buying to see if they shrink easily or if they have long lasting you know materials because i have had geese before where the top is fitting me great the bottoms are like high waters and then i put them in the dryer one time and they look like capris and it's frustrating so a lot of times you don't even want to put them in the dryer but sometimes if you're running low on geese and you have to put them in the dryer on like fluff dry you still want to make sure that they're not going to shrink a ton Keep that in mind when you're looking at your size, when you're looking at the quality, and once again, you're looking at your quantity over time after you've stayed in jujitsu for a little bit. So I hope that's helpful. Remember, don't feel pressured into having to buy everything and anything brand new. There's a lot of awesome websites out there that will have slightly used, like Facebook Marketplace has several jujitsu groups where they sell lightly used, if not even used, items. Second, you can look on Facebook Marketplace in general. I'm sure they have things there. And third, I asked, I just asked people, hey, I really wanna commit, but I'm not sure I'm gonna commit yet. Is there any way I can borrow a gi? And I'll bring it right back the next day. And I would always bring it back after the one or two days I asked to borrow it. Even if they let me continuously borrow it, you wanna be respectful of their time and their gi and their investment. And that for me is crucial. When I lend out my gi, I usually expect that it's just going to be gone forever. It's what I've had to come in with thinking because people have not respected the return policy of doing it after a few weeks or even after a month. If they choose not to show up, they don't even get back to you. And so you want to be really aware that if you're borrowing something to present it back or at least keep in communication with how long you've had it, hey, I still remember that I have your pants, I'll give them to you next month. And if you're on the other end of things where you're lending them out, you should expect to get rid of them forever at that point in time unless you really trust and know that person because you will find yourself frustrated, annoyed, and <laughs> under like a limited amount of pants or gi tops or compression shirts if you are very gracious in giving. So when you give, give to the extent of, of expecting that you won't get it back. If you feel like you trust the person or you feel like you wanna get it back in a certain amount of time, get their contact information at least so you know you can contact them if you need your key pants back or something like that in an amount of time that's reasonable. If any questions, let me know down below in the comment section. If you have a suggestion for people that are coming in new and they're thinking that they need to have everything ready to go, what what is one piece of advice that you would give them in starting off with the things that they might need? Let me know in the comment section below so we can help other people out on this beautiful journey of jujitsu. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.